Severe weather is going to be the big trend across the country in the next four days. This video is here to break it down along with a look at some temperatures. Let's jump into it. Before I move on, here's a quick reminder that the weather bell model maps I use in my videos are available to you with the free trial link below. You can sign up for that as well as the paid subscription using that link in the description. With that being said, I want to go ahead and jump into this video by overviewing which areas will have the best chances for storms day by day in the coming days. Later on, we'll dive more specifically into each day's severe weather hazards and risk zones. Here we go, though, playing things into our Tuesday, June 17th, 2025 with the GFS Ensemble Guidance. You can see there are two main zones that are highlighted on this guidance with heavier concentrations of showers and storms. The dark green color on screen really indicates where scattered to widespread thunderstorm development can be expected. One of those zones is going to be over some parts of the deep south, the southern Appalachians, and then up into the mid-Atlantic region in the zones of dark green here from Mississippi and Alabama up to Pennsylvania and in points in between. Scattered thunderstorms, some of which may produce isolated flooding and severe weather, can be expected. The better chance for severe weather and even some flooding, though, is going to be back in the plains where we get a late-day round of storms that could follow up some morning activity as well starting in parts of Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska, Iowa, and surrounding states, and then sinking south from there, we will see likely an afternoon, evening, and nighttime round of storms out of Tuesday into Tuesday night. Severe weather, again, is going to be a big hazard out of those. I'll talk about that more a little bit later. Here we go, though, playing things forward into our Wednesday. You can see still some spotty storms will be possible in the east with that continuing boundary there into our Wednesday at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 o'clock. In general, the coverage will be a little bit lower in those zones, though, in comparison to our Tuesday. Back into the Midwest, though, the Mid-Mississippi Valley and all the way on up into the Great Lakes in this zone I'm circling. We are going to be continuing to see that system that was in the plains on Tuesday shifting east. As it does so, a front will be moving in, and that will continue to be a catalyst for some severe thunderstorm development. Some of the storms along that front on our Wednesday into Wednesday night could extend as far back to the southwest into the south-central plains as places like Oklahoma and Texas in the Red River Valley region. Later through Wednesday night and into Thursday, that front will continue progressing east, and it'll begin to draw up more moisture into some parts of the deep south. Out of Mississippi, out of Alabama, into Tennessee, it will be another day where we could get some storms with at least isolated severe weather and flooding into our Thursday. And then a bit further east from there, I think, into Thursday evening and to the nighttime hours, that's where we're going to get our better chance for some severe weather. The mid-Atlantic stretching up into the northeast looks like the best chance corridor where we're going to get some instability working into these storms. From the Carolinas up to New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and in points in between, that looks like the best chance zone for late day, not only thunderstorm, but even some severe thunderstorm development along that front. Out of Thursday night into Friday, that front will really begin to break down in the eastern U.S. and just leave a few spotty storms in some parts of the southeast for Friday. Notice that boundary where there's some isolated precipitation showing up, though, out of the northeast U.S. and then extending back towards the Midwest through Friday. That is going to be where a backdoor type cold front sliding in behind the one I've been talking about will move in. That is going to briefly bring temperatures down well below average right along the parts of these states that border Canada. So far northeastern Minnesota, for example, in the Arrowhead, through the upper peninsula of Michigan, the far northern Gulf of Michigan, and then into the far western parts of places like New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Overall, the weather will take a bit of a break across the country into the weekend, other than some spotty showers and storms, especially in the north. Eventually, with time, though, severe weather chances will likely ramp up again by next week. With that being said, I want to now go into more detail about the severe weather expected in the coming days by looking at the jet stream first and how it will impact that setup. Here we go, pushing things forward into our Tuesday, June 17th. This is specifically looking at the jet stream at 15 to 20,000 feet on up into the sky. You can see that there is going to be a trough or a dip in the jet stream really working out of parts of the western United States and then curling on down in a U-type shape in two parts of the central plains. Some of the strongest energy is going to be working over those central plains states where we're likely going to get rapid fire thunderstorm development through the late afternoon into the evening and nighttime hours. It only makes sense that right up against this trough or piece of jet stream energy, there will be more ingredients coming up, such as moisture. We will also even have some lower level jet stream winds that could help in elevating the tornado potential. I'll talk a little bit more about that specifically for Tuesday night in just a minute. But looking at the overall setup, it continues into Wednesday. There goes that trough moving east with some of the strongest jet stream energy Energy, likely moving over states from the South Central Plains and all the way on up to the Great Lakes. Out of Wednesday and Wednesday night and then getting into the Thursday time frame, that trough will move even further east, where especially places like the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast will be right underneath that strongest flow. That's why those zones will have the best chance for severe weather then. With that being said, I want to now dive deeper into the day-by-day -day severe weather potential. I'm going to start with Tuesday. If you're more interested in Wednesday or Thursday, though, you can use the timestamps in the description to click ahead. On screen right now is the outlook for Tuesday and Tuesday night from the Storm Prediction Center where we have a level 1 to level 2 to even level 3 of 5 for the peak risk here, smack dab in the center of the country. 
As far north as South Dakota, parts of northern Iowa, southern Minnesota, and at southern Wisconsin, we have at least a level 1 risk. As far south as Oklahoma City and north Texas, we have a level 1 risk as well. But really in the yellow and orange is where the peak of this threat is going to come together with at least scattered in damaging winds and hail and possibly even a tornado risk. That is really going to be peaking in places like Topeka, as well as into places like Wichita and Dodge City there in Kansas. While significant damaging winds as well as hail look to be the main threats as highlighted by the Storm Prediction Center, you can see that they have put a 2-5% to chance of tornadoes within 25 miles of a point over a lot of the states affected. That is going to include at least a 2% zone in eastern Colorado through a lot of Kansas, and then extending as far east as parts of Missouri and Iowa, and then there in St. John, Great Bend. Hayes, Salina, Manhattan, Newton, Wichita, Emporia, and Ottawa in Kansas, you are in that peak of the tornado threat, so be on the lookout for a few spin-ups at the minimum within a line of storms that's likely to get together. Before I time those storms out, or at least how they're expected to time out for our late Tuesday and Tuesday night, here's a look at the lower level jet stream and how it is expected to roll and increase in strength as we go into our Tuesday evening. Look at this pocket of stronger lower level jet stream winds expected out of eastern Kansas into western Missouri. This correlates with where that 5% chance of tornado is from the Storm Prediction Center. This is stronger wind closer to the surface, moving from the south to the north, veering off a bit from the southwest and northeast flow that I was showing on the mid-level jet stream earlier. That is what is called wind shear, and when you get some of it, even in the summertime, you can get some tornadoes to spin up, even though it's not the peak tornado season. So be aware, as I mentioned, in those zones that were showing at least a 2-5% to tornado risk, if not even in surrounding zones. Now with that in mind, I want to go ahead and dive into some timing for these storms, or at least an overview of how they may play out as we go through our Tuesday and Tuesday night. This HRRR model is indicating what a lot of guidance is, and that is that we're going to have some storms ongoing in the risk area as we go through the morning hours. Some of this could bring heavy rain and gusty winds at the minimum to the morning commute in the peak part of the risk zone, Wichita. Topeka back up to Lincoln, Nebraska points in between, maybe even on over towards parts of Iowa and southern Minnesota, looking like an active time through the morning if this pans out. Either way, that energy from the morning storms is going to leave a lingering boundary somewhere through likely northern Kansas and into Missouri. As that boundary begins to set itself up and we see a lot of daytime heating banking up against it, we will only be seeing the ink radiants just rising in that zone. We will also be watching storms already firing on up in other parts of the marginal and site risks. You can see back into the high plains, we will have some storms firing on up, maybe Torrington there in eastern Wyoming, getting into western Nebraska, some storms already by 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll possibly get some severe storms over there in the marginal risk area around the lower Lake Michigan and points westbound as we go deeper through the afternoon and evening. But watch what happens as the afternoon and evening rolls on. Here come some bigger storms coming off the high plains into western Nebraska, northeast Colorado. Eventually, they'll move into northern Kansas. As they move into northern Kansas, we will also see huge storms likely firing on up toward their, towards their south and east. These could be the biggest ones of the day as we get around and then or just after sundown. Hayes, Salina, Manhattan, Kansas, right smack dab where the Storm Prediction Center has the enhanced risk. That's where we're likely going to get significant gusty winds of 60 to 80 miles per hour, hail of 1 to 3 inches in diameter, and even a few tornadoes to be possible. And again, this is going to be in scattered to widespread fashion how we see this set up in at least this corridor of central and eastern Kansas through the middle of the night even on our Tuesday night. Sure, we could see some severe weather continuing in southern Nebraska in isolated fashion even into the middle of the night, but that real dangerous line might be knocking on the Wichita area's door. Not until 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning into our Wednesday. Further southeast from there, it looks like as we see the enhanced risk turn to the slight here on the Storm Prediction Center's outlook, we could still see some severe weather in those zones, and it might not even be till closer to sunrise on Wednesday morning or an hour or two before when the activity is getting into those zones. Kansas City, Missouri, it might be well after midnight, sure enough, when the severe weather possibly moves through, or at least skirts around you at the minimum. From there, storms will likely break up, and we'll just see more lingering rain like we saw Tuesday morning by Wednesday morning in advance of our Wednesday threat. By Wednesday and Wednesday night, the front is expected to move east, but that does not mean the severe weather will stop. In fact, an even broader corridor is anticipating at least a level 1 risk. That goes from North Texas and the Abilene and Dallas region all the way as far to the northeast as Cleveland, Ohio, and even the western suburbs of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The peak part of the risk zone, of course, is the level 2 of 5 slight risk. That includes Oklahoma City, Jonesboro, Arkansas, Springfield, and both Missouri and Illinois, including St. Louis, Missouri, too. We've got the northwestern part of Kentucky, Paducah, getting on the northern side of Louisville, getting on up towards Indianapolis, Indiana, Chicago, Detroit. All looking at a level 2 risk on Wednesday and Wednesday night. Millions of people under the threat of damaging winds, hail, and a few tornadoes. The action won't even end there. The Storm Prediction Center, as of the time of this video, has already issued an area where they think a level 2 of 5 will be put down for scattered severe weather by Thursday. 
Thursday and Thursday night looks active from the Carolinas all the way in up to Virginia and into the big population centers along I-95 through the rest of the Mid-Atlantic from New York City and over westbound of there into Hazleton and Scranton and Pennsylvania all the way back down through Baltimore, Philly, Washington, D.C., Richmond, back down to Charlotte and points in between. Looking like an active time for some damaging winds, hail, and a few tornadoes then. I don't see flooding as a significant overall threat out of most of these rounds of storms, but here's a look at the total precipitation anticipated from the time of this video through the end of the week according to the Weather Prediction Center. You can see that especially where we get some of our heavy rain out of the central plains, some of the storms into the Midwest, Great Lakes, and then as far east as the Ohio Valley and parts of the Mid-Atlantic. This zone that I have circled, looking at some spots that will be getting upwards of half an inch of rain at least. Many zones will get upwards of even an inch or two. Overall, though, three, four, five inch totals, those will be much more local. That's why I think flooding is going to be very isolated day by day from Nebraska and Kansas all the way to Pennsylvania and in points in between. Elsewhere, flooding risk will be even lower, but you can never rule it out in the summer with those heavy downpours. What does this front and the active severe weather it's going to bring mean for temperatures on its backside? at least a brief cool down with some lower humidity, that's for sure, and that's going to begin in the central plains and north central plains heading out of the midweek time frame. Nebraska surrounding zones right after your big round of storms Tuesday night, you will be cooler than average in terms of temperatures, at least for what this graphic is showing on Wednesday and Wednesday night. Ahead of the front, temperatures should be around to above average on Wednesday, which is what this graphic is showing. This is as we go through Wednesday into Wednesday evening, around to above average, so lots of 80s and 90s in the eastern third of the country. Back west, behind the front, there will be a big ridge developing in the jet stream, and that means temperatures will be well above average through the mountain west already. While the average to below average temperatures shift further east by the end of this week into the eastern third of the country, now in the central and a lot of the western zones, we will continue to be warming up even more as that jet stream ridging prevails there. From Utah to Wyoming to Colorado to New Mexico to Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, the Dakotas, and over to Iowa, just looking at a huge warm-up with temperatures well above average to finish this week. To break the news for you now, the temperature trends as we go towards this weekend and next week. Yeah, it means we're going to warm up even further east, so everybody's going to get their fair share of this big, almost heat wave type pattern, and I want to talk now about what that means for the exact temperature numbers that are going to be reading on the thermometer. Here we go, starting with Tuesday, you can see a lot of warmth ahead of this initial front that is going to be driving through the pattern, but behind it, it will be a little bit more manageable. There's the difference right there. You can see in southern Utah, southern Colorado, down south of there, we're going to be seeing 80s, 90s, and eventually as you get closer to the Mexico border, triple digit heat. Some zones in Southern California, Southern Arizona, Southern New Mexico, and Southwest Texas will be near 110. That's near record breaking heat for Tuesday south of that front already. Further east, a big field of 80s and 90s with the exception of the Northeast US. Behind the front though, again, cooler with 70s in places like the Dakotas and Minnesota for Tuesday. Those 70s, again, below average temperatures, upper 70s, low 80s in general, moving over into the upper Midwest and Great Lakes for Wednesday. Still more 80s south of the front. Let's take a look at how the trends change as we go towards the end of this week. There's your little bit of a cool down still trying to sink down. Most zones in the southeastern U.S., as we tend to see in June, will go unfazed by the majority of this cool down, even as it dives in by Thursday and Friday. The 90s will prevail there at least upper 80s to say the least. We'll see plenty of mid and upper 80s continuing in the Midwest even after this front as we go towards our Thursday. Look at this back behind the front though. There's your ridging already building up in the jet stream 90s and triple digits all through the valleys in the West, even in the front range in the High Plains region. Thursday is going to be a hot one and it will only get jacked up even more by Friday. This is some insane heat right here. If you live in Nebraska, in Colorado, in the eastern side of the Rockies, in western Kansas especially, this is very abnormal heat, well into the triple digits, feeling possibly even hotter if we get a little bit of humidity with this into our Friday. Very dangerous heat, and that wave of heat will only push east from there. Look at this, we're going to be warming well into the 90s by Saturday over the Mississippi Valley region. By Sunday, even further east, a big quarter of 90s will start to be pushing up, and I don't even want to really talk about this for those of you there in Nebraska, but it will still be in the upper 90s as we get towards Sunday. So this ridge is going to be a big one. At least two-thirds of the country will probably be around 85 plus, it looks like, based on this guidance for around Sunday. So please be ready. Have plans in place uh, for helping your neighbors, for making sure that your pets are going to be indoors, stuff like that. Just be thinking of the people around you when this kind of heat is on the way. 
With that being said, that is all I have for today's video. I know things have been a little bit slow as of lately on the channel, but if you're new to this page, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below so that you don't miss my forecast videos and live streams in the future. I even plan on doing some form of documentary content or recap content of this severe weather season or maybe something in the past. If you're interested in that kind of thing and you've made it to this point in the video, leave a comment down below letting me know what you think of that idea. Thank you for sticking with me right here on the channel. I'll catch you in the next update video, which may very well be tomorrow on our Tuesday. One Nation Weather.